Hello, welcome back. So today I'm just doing another Making It Mid-Century video in which I remake a build that I found on the gallery. Um, this is just showing you which one that is if you care to download that original build with its two packs used. <laughs> um, I used more than two packs. I used like everything that we have. So, um, just to clarify as a disclaimer, so I've done one of these videos before, but just to do another disclaimer, I do not mean any um, ill will or whatever towards the person who made this house originally. Um, I think they did a great job for what they had, you know, their options that they had at that time that they made this house. Um, I just, this is a reinterpretation. This is my version of it. This is how I see um, 1970s homes. So, yes, so this is a 1970s split level. Um, it's not really a split level in the way that you can make one in The Sims, but it has the essence of a split level, if you get what I mean. It's technically a two-story house and just one story um, is on half of the house instead of the full length of it, but it's like a split level and it looks like one from the like the street I think so essentially what I did to the majority of this house as a quick rundown a synopsis um, I made everything brown <laughs> I made everything brown or yellow basically so um, I finally got around to making this 1970s house and I didn't make it extremely boho and hippie I made it pretty realistic which is just that's what I do I can't not do it so um, if you're coming here for extremely like stereotypical 1970s stuff it's not quite gonna be that it's going to be a pretty realistic looking 1970s style family home um, so yeah just as my disclaimer also this garage is enormous like the fact that we can't actually have like useful garages in The Sims is a shame because that one is ginormous. So anyways, um, I was super excited to do this video, to do this build because 1970s is awesome. Like that whole time period was just so fun and <laughs> like there was just so much going on. Honestly though, like to actually live in that time, there was a lot of bad stuff going on, but like the whole aesthetic of everything, the design of everything, and just all the stuff that happened in this time, just crazy. It's amazing that people got to live through that. Um, so with this one, I didn't do like I did with the last one where I kind of walked you through the whole house just because I didn't want to rag on the person too much. Like I didn't want to be mean or anything or inspired. Like um, anything mean towards the person who made it with whatever choices that they made, but just as kind of a summation of my thoughts of, um, the original designs of this house, a lot of it worked and a lot of it didn't just because it was primarily base game and two packs. So there wasn't a lot that you could do with that. Um, and so with me having all of the packs, except for my first pet stuff, I will never buy that. Um, I was able to make it look a lot more realistic because we have so many more options now. And I'm sorry if you want me to do, like, wow, English. I'm sorry if you want me to do a video in which I use only base game. It's not going to happen. There's just no way that I can do a realistic looking um, like mid-century or period house with just the base game. It's just not going to happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I don't even, honestly, I don't even want to try because I think I would just have a headache like the whole time and just be angry. <laughs> so, um, this video did take me a long time to make and get out here. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And they're boring and not interesting. Um, life got in the way, but here I am 
I'm bringing it to you. <laughs> and it was just, honestly, it was so fun to decorate. But it got really difficult because there's so many different styles in this time period. People went crazy. They just had so much freedom in design. And I didn't go too much into researching it because I'm more of an appreciator than a scholar when it comes to like design stuff like this so um but like I don't know why exactly this is my whole point I don't know why exactly all these things existed and why like trends shifted this way but they did and I'm thankful for it because I think it's awesome so just to because I did do research just to give you some idea of the trends to explain some of my choices here because I know some of you may be looking at this either not from America or not familiar with 1970s trends. And so let me just clarify some things here, okay? <laughs> some big things in the 1970s, some like key items that if you wanted to have a 1970s house, these were things that you had to have. And um, I do want to reference, I got a lot of these from a website called apartmenttherapy.com. Um, I'll see if I can link the article in the description below. But basically, the 1970s is iconic for things like shag carpet. And I wanted to point out, this was a trend even in bathrooms and kitchens. So in this house, I did put carpet in bathrooms and I'm not sorry about it I think it's hilarious so <laughs> there's shag carpet um, and not just like not the carpet that you are used to having in a house you know that's not shag carpet like that is a type of shag but that is not the shag carpet that we're talking about here this type of shag carpet is like four to six inches long of the little tendrils of carpet you know like I might throw a picture up here, but like, it, it's long <laughs> and it was hard to clean um, because of how long it was. Like, imagine trying to run a vacuum over it. Okay. Not, it's going to be difficult. Um, and it was typically colorful um, or I feel like it was either a bright color or it was brown. Like it was either or it was either so some color names, okay, acidic orange, avocado green, or lime green. There was some other, like, oceanic blue, something like that. But it was either, like, one of those colors, like the yellow that we've got in there in the other room, um, or it was, like, brown. So that's the color scheme for this house. It's basically yellow and brown. <laughs> and it's great. I love it. And I got to use so much wood paneling. That was also a huge trend in the seventies. It was everywhere. It was on the appliances. It was on the TVs. It was on cars. Like wood paneling was the thing to have. <laughs> Everyone had it on everything. If we could have had cell phones at the time, you bet your ass they would have been made out of wood paneling or covered in it or something. Anyways, that was a tangent. Wow, I'm excited. So, <laughs> another one is stones, like stacked stones. Um, and I did use some, some stone uh, wall covering in this house. And it's not where you would expect it. You'll see. And you'll probably be like, why? That was my thought too, but I did it anyways. So it's fun. Um, oh, and it was typically accompanied by wood paneling but it was also typically used for fireplace facades. And I didn't try to do that with this video just because I like, I really like, if you guys have watched my other videos, I really like that one fireplace that we have. Um, I forget what pack it came in, but whatever. It's a great fireplace, that one. I love it. <laughs> I love it, I think, because it has the whole brick part that's away from the wall and it goes up to the ceiling. And I just wish it didn't have that top part so that, you know, your Sims couldn't leave dishes on the top of the freaking fireplace. Like, why? Why is that a thing that happens? Anyways, um, that's my favorite fireplace. So I just wanted to use that. <laughs> and I didn't want to do stones. So also exposed brick was really popular. So, of course, I have exposed brick in here a lot as well. And um, 
crazy wallpaper so there's a lot of wallpaper in this house but I wish we could have had the same type of wallpaper they had in the 70s we really do not have anything that compares <laughs> like they had textured wallpaper um, they had shag carpet wallpaper they had patterned colorful crazy wallpaper and it was a lot it was over the top a lot of times it was like you'd have foil on the wallpaper so it was reflective and metallic you would have mirrors like also in the same room which is what I did in like the uh, formal living room there so it was things reflecting off of it and <laughs> it's just a, it was a lot um, that is kind of just how I would characterize the 1970s interior design as a whole it was just a lot <laughs> so um, there's also brass brass was extremely popular as a metal choice for this time period so you'll see a lot of the fixtures are that sort of color of brass and honestly now like it's you'd probably be hard-pressed to find um, brass in like a modern home right now unless it hasn't been renovated yet also I just wanted to point out with this little radio thing I was so proud of this okay because it looks built in and I know it's kind of weird to be like, okay, you have cabinets with dishes in them in, like, the family room, but it's fine. Just ignore that. <laughs> I just think it's really cool that there's a built-in stereo. That was a very popular thing at the time in the 70s, so I really wanted to do that. It's, like, secret stereos. You think it's a piece of furniture, but it's actually the radio. It's awesome. Um, also, this house came with a giant sunroom, and I did not know what to do with it, so forgive me for this. I had no idea what to do with this space, so I'm sure some of you could make this a lot cooler. I had no idea what to do with it. it <laughs> I sat there for a while just like, what goes in a sunroom? I've, I've never been in a sunroom in my life. I don't know what you do with that, so apologies. Also, again, with this garage, it was huge. It was huge, and I didn't change a lot. Um, there were some spaces of this house that I didn't go in and massively redo because I didn't think they needed it. The garage, I think, was fine. I just wanted to add a few more things to make it a little bit more realistic. Um, and also, the basement, I didn't redo at all. I left it the same. I thought they did a pretty good job, and it kind of represents the funkiness of the 70s and that things cannot match in the same house, you know? Majority of this house is kind of a sort of going into the trend of like the retro colonial or the um oh god what is it called the victoriana trend or whatever um of the time but the basement is much more of the kind of more modern sleek styles that you would see with plastics and all that sort of stuff and that's totally fine it's you know not everything is going to be one style um and not everything is going to be of the same decade in one house, you know. So a lot of times these things, you might see me using them in a 1940s style house or a 1950s style house. And that's fine. <laughs> things changed. Things blended into each other. Um, and people didn't just throw everything out at the end of a decade or when it wasn't trendy anymore. People still kept it. So um, that's how I like to think of things. That not everything would have changed. I also, in my like head when I was making this house... I was telling myself that the family who um, built it, they got a discount on the carpet. <laughs> it's just in my head. So the brown carpet was the cheap carpet. They got a good sale on it, okay? But their kids wanted the fun carpet that's like the crazy colored ones. And so they like got a bunch of that. And because they got a bunch of that, they got like a good deal on the brown carpet. It's not as funny when I say it out loud, but like to me, that was hilarious making this video. So. I probably should have cut that out. I probably should not have <laughs> included that in this voiceover, but whatever. Um, that's just an insight into how I think about things. So what else can I say about the 1970s? Um, well, oh, you know what? I wanted to talk about this one trend that I think is so interesting. So I mentioned it a second ago, the retro colonial or Victoriana or whatever you want to call it. Um, it seems like it had multiple names. Victoriana, I think, is slightly different than the retro-colonial. I'll explain. So, 
in this time, for whatever reason, people were thinking about colonial furniture and stuff, and that was a trend. Um, these styles of, like, the early, early furniture. So, if you think back to the dining room um, and the chairs that are in the bar. Oh, I really wanted to use this carpet for this room. I ended up not doing it, but oh well. Um, <laughs> the, the sort of... It's hard to describe, really, without showing you pictures of it, but the sort of furniture with, like, the the spindles, is that what it's called? Oh, my God. I can't remember. The things on, like, the back of a chair that are, like, little rods, okay? The shape of them, those sorts of things, the railing, the little... I want to call them spindles, but I don't know if that's the right word. Those things in the middle, the shape of them... It's a very colonial style. This room that I'm making right here, this room I was gonna go crazy funky and then I was like, you know what, no, I'm gonna go with the sort of weird French colonial style that was popular for some reason at this time. <laughs> and I don't know why it was, but as soon as you add gold to it, it looks 1970. So I didn't add a lot of gold to this, I could have, but I didn't add a lot of gold to this room. But basically, that's quintessential 1970s for some reason. People were really into that. Um, there was one brand that was really popular for it called Laura Ashley. And if you've ever seen anything by them, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, it's dated, you know, you wouldn't really want it in your house today, but at the same time, it doesn't scream 1970s, but like at the same time it does it's so hard to explain because it's taken from a different time yet it's still dated it's kind of like when you see um I don't know if this is relatable to anyone but if you see a dress that's like 1980s does 1940s you know it looks 1980s but a lot of things about it are 1940s at the same time so it's hard it's one of those weird floater type of things Anyways, I thought, I think it's interesting because when I was um, a teenager, my whole furniture bedroom set was that same style. So, and I always thought it was so weird because I'm like, it sort of looks like it's really old, but I know that it's not because of the quality of it <laughs> and the color choices because it had brass trims. Um, anyways, that was the thing that I wanted to mention on that. Obviously, other really trendy things at this time were bean bags, lava lamps. Um, bigger homes, but not huge homes. So just to get into that for a second, the 1970s was an interesting time for America. Um, obviously a lot of things were going on. Music was changing. Politics was like huge things in politics were happening with activism and LGBTQ rights and, um, HIV was a thing that was starting to become... Pop, not popular, oh my god, but like people were finding out about it. Um, you had the whole thing with John Lennon dying, and it, a lot of stuff was going on. There was a lot of politics and shitty things behind the scenes going on. Um, but at the same time, you were having like this boom in families, this boom in people working, and um you it was it was a weird time like <laughs> it was just a weird time but um with homes specifically because obviously that's like the thing that I focus on you know um the split level became popular because families were bigger so you got to think about this is about 20 year old baby boomers in their 20s so they're buying the houses for the first time they're starting families people are buying bigger homes. Now, these aren't huge homes. These aren't McMansions. You know, these homes were larger than what people had before, but they're smaller than homes that we have now, typically. So just to put it in perspective, um, that's why you've got the kitchen, which is huge. You have a separate, oh my God, you have a separate family room from a formal living room. You have a separate formal dining space from a regular dining space because you want to be able to entertain but you also have your family at the same time 
So there's a boatload of screenshots for this house just because of how many different rooms there were. So I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed my rambling throughout this whole thing. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't talk too much about the choices that I made in this, but I think it's kind of self-explanatory. I mean, in my opinion, it kind of is. But I really hope you like this house. I had so much fun making it, but it took me forever. <laughs> but um, I really loved making it. So anyways, please check out my other stuff. Please give me a like. Please subscribe if you want to. I can't force you to do anything. So if you want to do it, I appreciate it. Um, have a great time living your life. Okay. I don't know how to end videos. Whatever. Okay, bye!